Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and it is Saturday which means it is time for another Inspired Saturdays collaboration. I hope you'll stick around, see who inspired me this week and find out how you can go see how I inspired her. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here. I am having such a great time with my Inspired Saturdays collaboration, and I hope that you are too. Before I get into the meat of the video, if you're a crafty YouTuber who would like to join me for a week in 2021, make sure to check out the video in the description box below. It gives the details on how you can fill out the application. And just keep in mind, if anything says 2020, that we'll just apply that to 2021. This week, I am teaming up with Charlotte of The Joyful Soul Creates. I will be creating a project here on my channel inspired by something that she created and she will be doing the same on hers but she'll be creating a project inspired by something I created. One of the fun things about this collaboration is neither of us knows what the other one is going to choose until the day our videos go live. So I always love it when I can go watch the other collaborators video to see how I inspired them. Make sure that once you're done here, you go visit Charlotte's video. It is linked at the top of the description box below. For my project today, I'm going to be inspired by this card that you see on screen. She created an alcohol inked vellum piece and die cut that with leaves. I just loved the fun fall feel of this card, so I'm going to stick with kind of a similar thing. But instead of doing alcohol inks on vellum, I will be doing some water coloring and then I will be die cutting leaves. In the description box below, I have a link to Charlotte's original video where she shows you how she made this card, as well as a picture of the card on her Instagram account. I'll tell you a little bit about the products I'm going to use and then we'll get into the process. I'm not really sure now what direction this card is heading in, so I will be adding products later on and I will be sure to let you know in the voiceover. As always, if I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. For my watercolors today, I will be using the Arteza Metallic Watercolors. There are 24 different colors here and I have kind of pre-selected some that I thought gave off a fall vibe. I will be using their wide water brush pen. And for my watercolor paper, I just used some that I picked up at Michael's, I think, and I have went ahead and prepared it. I cut it down to about five by seven. And then I used just some blue painter's tape that I picked up at Walmart to hold my watercolor paper down. Now to make sure that this painter's tape wasn't too sticky, once I tore the piece off the roll, I just kind of detacked it or kind of fuzzified it on my jeans. And that just makes it so later, hopefully, it won't tear the paper when I pull it up. To die cut my leaves, I'll be using this leaf set from Spellbinders. I'm not sure if this is available anymore. I have had it for a while, but if it is, I will try to link it up in the description box below. Let's get crafty. I'm gonna get started on today's project by doing my water coloring. And let me start out by saying, I really have no idea what I'm doing here. I just like to play around with the colors and I think with the price of the Arteza products I don't feel like I have to be a master to use them. I previously did wet each of the colors that I was thinking about using. I used a gold, a copper, and a bronze and I just placed little splotches of those all around that white area making sure to cover all the way to the edge. Once I had the three colors laid down and all of the white covered up, I decided to bring in a little bit of the green. I thought whenever you have a leaf pile in the fall, there's still always some green ones that have fallen off the tree. So I added a bit of that to my brush and just tapped it around on the open area in places that I thought it might look good. 
Once I had the painting part done, I did go ahead and bring in my heat tool to help dry that just a little bit quicker. Then I pulled that blue tape off the paper and luckily I had just a tiny bit of tearing but nothing that was going to interfere with die cutting this piece later. It might be a little difficult to see on screen, but those paints have such a beautiful metallic shimmer to them. Now previously, I was recording this video and realized that it did not catch the first one I painted. So I did end up with two of these pieces, which I will end up needing for the die cutting. And speaking of die cutting, that was the next step in my process. Off camera, I pre-cut my painted pieces to two and a half inches wide to fit through my little mini die cutter. And then I got out my Scotch blue removable tape. I grabbed four or five pieces of that and I will use that to hold my dies in place while I run them through the die cutter. This tape is awesome. It can be used over and over again. And when you peel it up, it does not remove any of the paint or any of the pattern paper if you would use that. I did end up having to run the dies back and forth. I think I went through three times, so forward, backward, forward, because there were quite a few dies on that sheet, and I wanted to make sure everything got cut nicely. And here's a look at that first set I die cut. I just continued to keep die cutting until I used up all of those painted pieces. Off camera, I cut a scrap of cardstock that was four inches wide by five and a quarter inches tall. Just like the original inspiration piece, I want my leaves to fill the front of that card. I played around with the arrangement a little bit until I had it where I liked it. And this did take a little while, but I was just patient and filled it in as best as I could. Once I had all of my leaves in place, that was when I brought in my secret weapon. Glad Press and Seal. You might have seen this used before on Jennifer McGuire's channel. It is a very low tack sheet of adhesive and this allows me to pick up those leaves in exactly the spot that I wanted them in. Now a couple of the leaves did shift so I moved that and I added one and then I placed it back over that piece of cardstock so I would be able to die cut this. But before I run it through my die cutter, I did need to cut off that excess press and seal. And then I brought in my Hero Arts Infinity dies and I chose the third from the largest to do the die cutting. Once again, I will be using Scotch Blue removable tape to keep my die in place. Once I have the rectangle die where I want it, I place two pieces of that tape on the edge and then I run that through my cuddle bug. Once I remove my leaf piece from the die, I can then peel back the press and seal from the piece of cardstock and I now have my rectangle of leaves. Now you might be wondering why I did this. Why didn't I just glue it down to a card base? That is because I wanted these to be popped up off my card front. So I brought in some Stampin' Up! Dimensionals. These are all left over from paper pumpkin kits and I placed foam on the back of all of the leaves I used a variety of regular dimensionals, mini dimensionals, and even some of the border around the outside edges. Once I had the foam on the back of each leaf, I pulled the release paper and got ready to place it on my card front. For my card base today, I'm using a light gold shimmery cardstock that I had in my stash. Now it is time to get these leaves placed on the front of my card. Now I probably should have went a little bit slower because I started adhering these down and they went crooked. But really at this point there wasn't anything I could do so I just stuck with it. I doubt anybody else who receives this card would notice. Once the leaves were in place with that foam tape I could then pull back the press and seal and I just love the dimension now on that card front. For my sentiment today, I got out this new to me set from Gina K Designs called Autumn Silhouettes. I bought it because I love those veiny leaves and I thought the sentiment in it, trees show us just how beautiful letting go can be, would go really well with the leaves on the front of my card. I will be stamping my sentiment in Versamark and embossing that with some detail white embossing powder. I did go ahead and get out my embossing buddy so that I can run that over the cardstock so the powder sticks only to where I want it. 
I am stamping on that same cardstock that I use for my card base. Once I have stamped the sentiment, I pulled out my tidy tray and dumped my white powder over the sentiment. And I did that a couple times to make sure it was nice and full of powder. There was a little stray embossing powder, so I got out a dry paintbrush and wiped that away. Then I pulled out my heat tool and heat set that powder. Next, I pulled out my little Fiskars photo trimmer and I just eyeballed an even cut on the top and bottom of my sentiment. And once I had that done, I turned my piece around and I chopped off some to the right side of the sentiment. Once that was done, I held it up to my card and decided that I needed to take a little bit more off the right. And then I trimmed some off the left and I hand cut a fishtail banner into the end. I did this by eyeballing the center, cutting a small slit, and then cutting in from each side to that center cut. Now it's time to get my sentiment adhered to the card front. Because I don't know exactly what areas of my fishtail banner will hit those leaves, I did cover the back of it pretty well with my ATG adhesive. Once I had it in a place that I liked it, I aligned it with that kind of right line that I had die cut and I got that pressed into place. To add a little bling and to pull out the white from the heat embossed sentiment, I brought in some small white self-adhesive pearls and I added a few around the front of the card. And here's a look at the finished piece. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I was inspired by Charlotte to create today's card. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go visit her channel to see how I inspired her. Once again, her link is at the top of the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.